everyone, this is Rachel. Thanks for clicking on my video. And I came in today to talk about a new show that premiered on Bravo, I believe last Sunday. And this new show is called To Wrong With Love. Now, the reason why I wanted to um, talk about this show, because it's not really a review, I just want to discuss the premise of the show, is because um, it's about five black women who go to Rome um, and they are going there because it is said that Italian men really love black women and that because they can't find love here in America, they're going to try their luck in Italy. Um, well, Rome in their case. But the reason why I want to talk about it is um, I've told you guys before that for about 12, maybe 13 years of my life, I was a corporate travel agent. And in doing that job, I got a chance to travel to quite, quite a few places in the world and here in the United States. And one of the places that I went to was Italy. And I went there when I was in my early 30s. I think we stayed for eight days. And first of all, let me say this. What they say about Italian men loving black women is true. Now, I did say that this is not going to be like a review of the show. It's going to be a talk about the premise of the show. And to start off this talk, I want to tell my experience first. You know, what happened to me when I went there? So um, I was in my probably early to mid thirties and I went there with a group of six women. I was the sixth person. Five people that I went with were white. Um, we were able to get tickets really cheap because we were travel agents. We were able to get a hotel really cheap. Um, we bought tickets to ride on the URL. I remember everything about this trip because it was like the highlight of all the trips that I've gone on. I remember what airport we flew into. It was called Malpensa, and I might be pronouncing that wrong. We stayed at a hotel called the Hotel di Savoia there in Milan. So we flew into Malpensa and then we took like a bus to our hotel that was actually in Milan. Now, while I was there, I visited, um, I stayed in Milan. We went to Venice. We went to Lugano, Switzerland, and we went one other place, but I can't remember. But when I got there, you know, it was a culture shock because the moment you get off the plane, you know that you're in another country because first of all you don't understand a damn thing that folks are saying you can't read any signs you pretty much don't understand your money because we had to change you know our money until you know to lira which is you know what they call their money instead of instead of the dollar um but quickly you know as a woman um i learned the money Look like Monopoly money to me, y'all. But anyway, we get to the hotel. I'm rooming with one of my co-workers, white girl, nice girl. So no problem with that. So before we had gone, we planned out, you know, some of the countries that we were going to be traveling to on the URL. So what our plan was is to every day get up and travel to another country. Now, the URL is kind of, sort of kind of like Amtrak, but it's Amtrak on steroids. It's actually beautiful. The cars that you're in, that you ride in, are gorgeous. Um, they have people come along uh, with um, a tray with refreshments on it, coffee, tea, sweets, and all of that. And they were like sleeper cars because you can let down uh, the seats and you could actually sleep on them. So every day we would get up, we would have breakfast, and then we would catch a taxi to the train station. I even remember in in Italian, the train station is called 
entrada, something like that. Might be saying it wrong. But every day we would catch the, um, you know, a, a taxi to the train station, and then we would go to whatever country um, we were going to go to that day. Because literally, you can get on the train, and you would be in Milan, and maybe you ride three or four hours, and I'll just say you're in Venice. The next day, you get up, you ride five, six hours, and then you're in another country. The URL is the best way to get around Italy, and we use it daily. So, we get on the train um, the first day, and I don't know which city we were going to. I think it was Venice. And we spent the day in Venice. We had a good time. You know, we bought souvenirs. We walked all around. And by the end of the day, when it was time to go back, we were exhausted because we were walking around all day, you know, for hours. And, you know, so we were tired. So we get back on the train and I am, you know, just sitting there dozing and, you know, trying to wait, you know, these four hours until we get back to Milan and to get to our hotel so we can kind of rest for a little bit and then have dinner. And then I remember when I was on the train, there was an Italian man that kept smiling at me and, you know, trying to get my attention. So at first, I thought he was trying to get the attention of the person that I was with. Now, again, I was the only black girl in this group of six women. As my daughter would say, I was the only chocolate chip in the bag, y'all. So eventually, you know, I looked up and, you know, he made it very clear that it was my attention that he was trying to get. So I'm sitting there thinking, oh my God. Now, y'all, let me just describe this man. At the time, I was, like I said, um, early 30s to mid 30s. This man had be like maybe in his 40s very very good looking man now of course I couldn't speak Italian he could speak a little bit English but it really wasn't good but the English that he spoke he made it very clear that he wanted me and he thought I was beautiful my beautiful chocolate skin this is all the stuff this man was saying to me he was so aggressive that my the people that I was traveling with they thought it was hilarious well it was hilarious because of my reaction um i was thrown back i was thinking okay you know it's one thing for this man to wink and smile but he literally got up from his seat the girl that i was sitting with he was flirting so bad she was like i'm gonna let you sit here you know so you could sit by her now mind you y'all we had three to four hours on this train train ride to get back to um, Milan. This man flirted the entire time. Now, I think he got off a couple stops before we did. He didn't go all the way into Milan, but let me just tell you some of the things he was saying. Of course, he was saying that I was beautiful, my skin, he was kissing my hand, and, and you know, he gave me his business card and told me, could he please um, take me out? Um, now, y'all, at this point, I was scared because it had gone from, you know, just funny flirting to this man was downright serious. You know, he even licked my arm. Y'all almost threw up, but he licked my arm and said, Oh, chocolate, it's beautiful, your skin. I love the color of your skin. Now, I'm sitting there with this man done kissed my hand, licked my damn arm. Now, at first, I thought he was attractive, but again, I was I was thrown back. I was telling him that I was married. Um, he told me that wasn't a problem because my marriage license was not valid over in Italy. <laughs> this man was tripping, y'all. Um, so he kept begging me to let him take me out while I was there. You know, he had asked us how long we were going to be there, and we had told him for a week, a little over a week, and he was like, please let me take you out, and I was like, you know, I don't know you. I'm not going off with you. He was like, well, get, tell me where you're staying, and we can have dinner, you know, in the you know, at the hotel, that way you will feel safe, you know, you're not going off anywhere with me. He was so persistent, y'all. He gave me all of his information, begged me to call him when I got back to the United States. It was ridiculous. 
this went on the entire ride home. My friends actually filmed it and they were laughing, you know, because I was so uncomfortable. So we get back, we go, you know, back to our hotel and we're getting dressed for dinner because um, what I noticed over in Italy, what we noticed immediately the first night when we went to dinner is they don't eat dinner the same time we do. They have something almost like a siesta where everything shuts down and they eat dinner late, like eight or nine. So we were walking around the first night we were there looking for something, some place to eat and everything was closed. And then when we went back to the hotel, you know, the hotel told us you can have dinner here, but let me just explain, you know, over in Italy, you know, in Europe, you know, they, they have this siesta what I call a siesta, where everything shuts down and then they open back up for dinner like eight or nine. So we we're like, okay. So that first night we actually ate in the hotel. So that was one experience. Then the next experience I had, we were in Venice. Okay. We get off the, the train in Venice. It is absolutely breathtaking, y'all. When I got off the, the the train and came up, you know, and in, in, into the city, like, you know, you get off the train and you walk up the stairs and you're in the city, I, I'll just say like a downtown, and you walk out and you see all this water and the gondolas and it's so colorful and just everything was beautiful. The moment that I get off the train, you know, you get off the train, you wait for your friends, everyone is running to the restroom and so you're standing there you know waiting for every one to gather back up the group to gather back up and while i was standing there uh, a group of young italian men were like cat calling me and what i mean by that is they were saying just you know you're beautiful look at you blah 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 I, and i was standing there like what is going on? Now, remember, I had already had the experience with the man on the train, and I thought that was just an isolated event. But standing there in Venice, it was happening all over again. And when my group, you know, got back together, they were saying stuff like, Rachel, it seems like you are the flavor of the month over here. Now, at the time back then, y'all, I didn't know that italian men found black women you know attractive or whatever and they kind of go after us but i'm gonna tell you guys my theory about that later on in the video as i talk about this show so we're walking around um venice again sightseeing and all throughout the day every place we visited these italian men y'all they were acting like I was a top model. Now, y'all, I am just the average black woman. Just the average black woman. I know how to put myself together, throw my makeup on, and do my hair, but I'm just the average black woman. Y'all, I am not even five feet tall. I am four foot 11. So it wasn't like I was a long legged beauty marching all over Venice. You know, back in my 30s, I still had my shape and everything though, but you know, I'm just the average black girl. So I'm wondering, you know, what the hell is going on? Because, you know, I had no idea that these Italian men are like this over women of color. Um, this went on all day. You know, one at one point we had went to, I, I'm going to tell y'all, it was a cheese store. We were so hungry because, because of the language barrier, we didn't know how to order food. The only place we could order food and we knew what we were going to be getting was at McDonald's. And McDonald's became a main staple because sometimes we would order something and it would come out and it would not be you know, edible to us. You know, we found the food, some of the food weird. Uh, it had gotten to the point where at one point I was only eating lasagna and spaghetti because on the menu, lasagna and spaghetti pretty much look like it does in America. So it was easy to understand. So I was the spaghetti lasagna eating little black girl. So, um, 
we had gone to this little cheese store. Um, it was beautiful, y'all. Just beautiful. We walked in. We didn't know what kind of store we were going in. When we looked at it from outside, we thought we were going into a bakery. But as soon as we opened the door, a funky smell came out. And we were like, what the hell is this? It was so pretty in the inside and intriguing that we, even though it was stinky, we went in, you know, because we were trying to figure out what this smell was. And when we got in, um, Another thing that I noticed, the average Italian person can speak a little bit of English, enough to where we understood them. Now, they may not understand everything that we're saying, um, because, you know, in English language, you know, we have several meanings for one word, so they could understand us a little bit, but they can speak English. So when we go into this cheese store, I, I'm a cheese lover. So I was like, look, I'm hungry, you know, um, I'm getting me some cheese. So, you know, I was just telling him I want some, you know, yellow cheese, like cheddar, and, you know, he understood it. And also, you can get fresh bread there, so I got me some cheese and bread. And... In the store, the owner's son worked there. He came from around the back. Um, young man looked like he was in his late 20s. He was flirty. Gave me all kind of free trees and bread. When I left there, y'all, I had a shopping bag. It was ridiculous. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. I got to get a little cold. <coughs> um, but anyway, getting back to the story. He had come from around, gave me all this stuff, um, gave me so much stuff for free that my friends didn't even really have to buy anything. They could eat what was in my shopping bag. It was just an experience that was that was odd and flattering on one hand, but scary on the other because I did not know what was going on. So getting back to this show that is premiering on Bravo about these black women that are actually going there. It was, I am going to watch this because I am interested to see exactly what their experiences are. Now that I'm older and I understand that, you know, Italian men do like black women. But something happened, you know, when I was watching the first episode of this. I watched half of it with my mother. And my mother was saying that she believes that they're interested in us because they have these myths, myths about us that we're, we're easy maybe, or that we going to give them some jungle love. And that's why they're hot after us. So the premise of this show is there is a woman by the name of Diane Valentine, and she invites five women over from different walks of life different ages and all of that over to Italy to find love. She actually has like sort of a dating service. Um, she has a little sidekick, uh, Italian woman, native Italian woman that actually speaks the language and helps her find dates for these black women, these successful black women. They find them six successful Italian men. Now, when I read the premise of the show and all of that, I was a little excited, you know, about this show. You know, just seeing, you know, it play out over several weeks, what I actually experienced when I went there. And y'all, when I tell y'all, I'm going to do a video on my experience just simply in Italy from beginning to end. When I tell y'all it was ridiculous how flirty they are and it's so hard to ignore them because they so goddamn fine y'all i was like lord if i could just be loose for just one night i would just let one of them italian men ravish me because they were absolutely beautiful and something i noticed about when you're over in italy the difference in the way the the Italians that actually live in Italy look, they're darker than the Italians that we see over here. I, I call it like a ruddy complexion, close to kind of like Puerto Ricans and, you know, that lighter Puerto Rican or Mexican look. They don't look like Mexicans, but it's a ruddier look. So 
I watched the, the first episode and I was a little disappointed, y'all, because first of all, they have these women that are on the show are very successful. Um, they have Gina Neely. Now she is the only one that I actually recognize. These other women, I have no idea who they are, but when I read their bios, all of these women are successful in their own right. Um, many of them have their own businesses. They're all college graduates and all of that. And they started to show off by saying that over in America, you know, black women don't get no love because, you know, a lot of people think we're loud, overbearing, we're, we talk too much, we're this, we're that. And that they wanted to dispel these myths about us. But what I noticed when when I watched the show, is they were being all of that. Now, it wasn't all of them. Gina Neely kind of sat back, and there's a young one that's about 25. She kind of sat back and, you know, just tried to get the lay of the land before, you know, they, they showed their, their real personalities. But there was this one lady. Um, her name is Shay. Y'all, she showed her ass on that first episode. If y'all watched it, she met an Italian man in a bar. Now, like I said, y'all, it's not, you could just stand there. You don't have to do anything. They will flock to you. They will spot you in the bar, the restaurant, the street or whatever, and they will flock to you. And I'm saying this again, every place that I went in Italy, I was attracting men. It was not even my intention but it happened every day, all day. So this one, she meets this guy in a bar. They get to talking and flirting and everything. And to me, this is how I feel about the flirting over there. As a black woman, because they're flocking to us, you do not have to try. To me, she was being a little bit too much. I would have stood back and let him talk to me now they continued to talk and she kind of went off with him and out on the street there in rome her and this guy were kissing busting slob and all this um she let this man kiss all over her now let me just tell y'all like i said the, t the temptation because these men are absolutely gorgeous the tempt there is temptation because I'm trying to think now um, that I'm older and I understand it, would I have had dinner with that guy at the restaurant in the hotel? Who knows? Maybe now that I'm older and I'm, you know, this is, you know, 10, 15 years later and, you know, I have more life experiences and I knew that the hotel would have been a safe bet because he couldn't have drugged me out the hotel with all those people in it. And I'm also divorced now. You know, I might have had dinner with him because let me tell y'all, these men are fine. But going, getting back to this series, she goes kind of off with him. They're busting slob. She comes all back to the, you know, the other ladies and she has him following her. And she's so secure and that she has snagged this Italian guy on the first night. But when I was watching it, I was thinking to myself, you're making yourself look easy you know, and some of the things that the Italian guy was saying, because they had to use subtitles, because they have broken English, and they may say the wrong word, so you got to kind of think about what they're saying, you know, so some of the things that he was saying rubbed me the wrong way, you know, he was treating her like a good lay, like he was going to be laying up with her that night, it just didn't feel right. And the other ladies tried to call her on it, you know, telling her, you don't know this man from Adam. Girl, you kissing all over him. You can get herbies, AIDS, something, whatever. You know, be careful. And she was telling them that something like maybe they wasn't, you know, that attractive enough where they didn't snag anyone as quick as she did. Now, like I said, these women come from all at aspects of life they're different ages different body types 
and there's one this one that i'm showing she's very insecure because she's you know been married a long time and gained a few pounds while she was married and her confidence is gone and you know she's wondering looking at the other woman what is this experience gonna be like for her y'all let me just say this the premise of this show is intriguing to me only because i had that experience you know i actually was there in italy years ago and what they're saying about these italian men hell maybe that's probably why tina turner went over there and visited and ain't never came back you know met her italian man and and stayed over there you know and also when you're there italy and you know the different places that i went in italy it, it it was beautiful and it's it's so pretty it's romantic and it's easy to fall for it when everywhere you're going you know you have all these men flocking after you you know maybe if i had stayed over there a while i probably would have got the big head and you know went on out with one of these italian stallions child and got my groove back but yeah y'all i i'm very intrigued by this show i want to see where it goes i want to see how each one of these women fare because a couple of them there's another one a chocolate girl i can't think of her name right right now uh ashley she was walking through the streets of of rome just walking up to random men kissing them and see it's making us look like we're easy you know if they're if they were trying to dispel all these myths about black women this first episode is not doing it for me um also too um when we had gone to italy um back when i went you know we're a travel agents so we know all we get all the information about the local you know the area that we're going to and we were told to dress you know in darker clothing because europeans dress they don't they're not as colorful as americans you know what are you know tennis shoes and all of that and let's face it we were in milan the fashion capital of the world so we went we wore a lot of browns and blacks and you know all of that these women are dressing like real housewives of atlanta y'all and it's nothing wrong with that but you have to understand where you are first in the world look around and see what's going on and then kind of dress accordingly because to me they were making a spectacle out of themselves now it also could be this because when i was watching it with my mother i was telling her my mother was saying the same thing and i was telling my mother i said it it might be this first episode they're just excited to be there and they're gonna calm down now this is the girl that i was telling y'all about the one that was kissing the italian guy shay atkins child she was too much y'all need to watch that first episode but yeah i was telling my mother i was like well maybe they're excited and that's why they're being a little bit too much on this first episode let us get in a few episodes and for them to settle down and you know understand the lay of the land but yeah y'all italy it is definitely a place for women of color but like i said i'm wondering do they like us because of our look do they actually think we're beautiful because y'all seriously when i was walking down the streets over there in milan even the old ladies was pretty to me i was like these bras have, are dressing their asses off and every woman that i passed i thought was absolutely gorgeous they were just beautiful women so that also makes you question why these italian men with these beautiful women that they have want us do they think something about us is exotic and that's why they want us now i'm not saying that some of these fellas can't be genuine because a lot of times the women were just walking down the street and um 
in one instance, the girl, Ashley, the, the pretty chocolate girl, she was in the airport. She had just got off the plane and she was walking with her luggage and she walked past a, a gentleman and he said, my God, you're beautiful. So, you know, it could be genuine, but it makes you wonder, you know, this love of black women, is it that they just want to screw us or do they genuinely find us attractive? Now, y'all, my experience over in Italy, it was one of the, like I said at the beginning of the video, it was a feast for the eye because the, the country, it's beautiful. It looks like something out of a, a, st a storybook, especially when I went to Switzerland and we went to where the story of Pinocchio started and I bought a wooden Pinocchio for my daughter and just bought a lot of souvenirs and I bought um, chocolate because, you know, they're known for their chocolate. It was so much stuff, y'all. And it is an experience. Um, now, when I went, I we didn't go to Rome. Like I said, we went to Venice. We were in Milan, Lugano, Switzerland, where we went to where allegedly Christopher Columbus was supposed to have sailed from. I can't think of this other place we went to. But yeah, it was it was a treat, y'all. It was something that I will never forget. Um, it was fun. It was scary at times because at one point I was out on the street and we were buying things from street vendors. And a bunch of little Italian girls, looked like they were about 13, came up to me with some scarves, some beautiful scarves, you know, just the scarves that you would, you know, drape around your neck. So I was going to buy some. Now, unbeknownst to me, they were homeless street kids and their intent was to rob me. Now, these little bras were about my height. And before I realized it, I had on a fanny belt, but I had it going across, across my body instead of around my fanny, you know, around my waist. Child, they were trying to pull it up over my head, damn near choked me to death. This Italian man ran up, beat them off of me, you know, explained to me that they were trying to rob me and that they did this to tourists all the time, you know, pretending to sell them scars when they were pit pickpocketing them. Luckily, the the fanny belt that I had, I had it around me going across my body under my jacket. So they really had the tug on it. They, like I said, they down there took the sit out of me. But once he saved me from them, he got down on his knees. He, I sat down on the bench and he got down on his knees and he was kissing my hand. Y'all, when I tell y'all that motherfucker was fine, I was thinking, Lord, I don't know. I might have to break my promise to myself of not being over here and being a skeezer and going on out with this one because Charlie was fine. And he was like, oh, you okay? You okay? You beautiful woman. Do you need me to go get you something? Do you need to, Do you need anything from me? I was thinking to myself, I just need to put you in my suitcase and take you home with me, you big, fine, sexy motherfucker. Y'all, I never knew um, that I was that attracted to them because they're absolutely gorgeous. And you can't help but to look at them these men with these dark hair and, you know, they're, like I said, they're not white, white, like these Italians over here. And y'all, that is the first thing that we noticed when we went there. We were like, they're really darker, you know, and um, it was just eye opening to us. Like I said, y'all, this trip to Italy for me, it was something. It was something. And like I said, I, I may do a video where I explain some of the things that happened to me because it was absolutely funny, some of the things that happened to me while I was over there. And I think I'm, I'm going to do a follow-up, a part two of this video and just talk about some of the funny things that happened to me while I was over there. But that's the end of this video, y'all. I think I'm going to follow this show weekly and I'm going to come back in and maybe not do a review of the show, but do just like a talk about what happened, you know, in general on the show. 
but I know this video was long. Thank you for hanging with me, but I just wanted to talk about the show and y'all watch it so we can have something to talk about, so we can have something to discuss down in the description box, uh, you know, down in the comments, y'all. I'm tired. It's late. But again, thank you for watching my video and you guys have a great night. Bye-bye now.